One summer evening, led by her, I found a little boat tied to a willow tree within a rocky cove, its usual home. Straight, I unloosed her chain and stepping in, pushed from the shore. It was an act of stealth and troubled pleasure, nor without the voice of mountain echoes did my boat move on. Leaving behind her still, on either side, small circles glittering idly in the moon, until they melted all into one track of sparkling light. That now, like one who rose, proud of his skill to reach a chosen point, with an unswerving line I fixed my view upon the summit of a craggy ridge, the horizon's utmost boundary. Far above was nothing but the stars and the grey sky. She was an elfin pinnace. Lustily I dipped my oars into the silent lake, and as I rose upon the stroke, my boat went heaving through the water like a swan. When from behind that craggy steep, till then the horizon's bound, a huge peak, black and huge, as if with voluntary power instinct, upreared its head. I struck and struck again, and growing still in stature, the grim shape towered up between me and the stars, and still, for so it seemed, with purpose of its own, and measured motion like a living thing strode after me. With trembling oars I turned and through the silent water stole my way back to the covert of the willow tree. There, in her mooring place, I left my bark, and through the meadows homeward went, in a grave and serious mood. But after I seen that spectacle for many days, my brain worked with a dim, an undetermined sense of unknown modes of being. Over my throat, there hung a darkness. Call it solitude or blank desertion. No familiar shape remained. No pleasant images of trees, of sea, or sky. No colors of green fields, but huge, unmighty forms that do not live like living men, move slowly to the mind by day, and wear a trouble to my dreams.